basically to figure out what is the direction of friction in rolling. Uh, in order to do that, we have to first decide if the friction is static or kinetic. As you remember, um, we have uh, the force of friction always pointing in a direction opposite to the direction of motion if it's kinetic friction. If it is static friction, then the direction of the friction will be determined by a Newton's laws of motion. Now, I'm going to consider a disc that is going to be rolling on this surface. And now, this is the contact point C for this disc. Let's say that it's rotating in the clockwise direction and the center of mass has a velocity v center of mass to the right <coughs> now if the velocity of the center of mass is greater than omega r so normally if this is just uh, a rotation rolling without slipping remember this should be equal to v omega r but now uh, the velocity of the center of mass is greater than omega r then what can we say about the velocity of the contact point well the contact point will have a velocity component due to the rotation here so it's going to have a uh, omega r pointing to the left and because of the uh, translational velocity of the center of mass it's going to have a v center of mass contribution to the right so in at the end i will find that the net velocity is v minus omega r so uh, v center of mass minus omega r now since v center of mass is greater than omega r this is going to have a net velocity uh, to the right so this scenario we call forward rolling forward rolling and in this case because the contact point has a net uh, velocity to the right the force of friction uh, that develops with the horizontal surface is a kinetic friction and it's going to be equal to coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force and what will be the direction of this uh, force of friction because the velocity of the contact point, the net velocity is to the right, Vc is positive, then we're going to see that Fk points to the left. So in this case, I would find that the force of friction should be to the left because I have net velocity to the right okay so let's think about another scenario now um, so this is again my contact point C now I want to know what happens if the velocity of the center of mass is less than Omega R then what would be the velocity of the contact point as you might have guessed this would be now omega r minus the velocity of the center of mass so let's see that here i will have uh, due to the rotation a component omega r to the left and due to the center of mass translation v center of mass to the right and omega r is greater than v center of mass there is a net velocity of the contact point to the left 
and what should we call this? This is backward rolling. Backward rolling. And in this scenario, again, the contact velocity is non-zero. Therefore, the force of friction would be kinetic friction, which is mu k times n. And since the contact velocity is negative, then the kinetic friction points to the right. So I would find that there should be a kinetic friction Fk to the right in this case at this point. So it would be to the right. Okay, so let's go back to um, our original figure. Now, what if I have rolling without slipping? So if V is equal to omega R, then as you can see here, this omega R and center of mass velocity would be exactly balancing each other. Uh, then I have rolling without slipping. So in this scenario, the contact velocity is zero. Therefore, the nature of the force of friction is static. And we know that the static friction is less or equal to coefficient of static friction times the normal force. The direction is unknown. The direction is determined by Newton's laws of motion. Okay, and what is the work done by force of friction? Well, the force of friction doesn't do any work. It just consumes energy, as you know. Uh, but in this case, uh, since the contact velocity is zero, if you calculate the energy loss due to static friction, there would be nothing because force of friction uh, does no work and uh, it is there is no displacement associated with the force of friction in the direction or opposite in direction to force of friction so i don't see any energy consumption due to static friction in this case okay now uh, let's look at a few examples a spool of wire of mass m and radius r is unwound with under a constant force f assuming the spool is a uniform solid uh, cylinder that does not slip show that the acceleration of the center of mass is 4f over 3m the force of friction is to the right and equal in magnitude to f over 3. If the cylinder starts from rest and rolls without slipping, what is the speed of its center of mass after it has rolled through a distance d? So this is an example for uh, rolling without slipping. Okay. Um, now... I'm going to start with addressing the issue of uniform solid cylinder. So for a uniform solid cylinder, what is the moment of inertia? Uh, you can calculate it easily. There's an example in the book and it shows you how to calculate it. Uh, we could just take the answer uh, moment of inertia for rotations about an axis going through the center of mass is equal to m r squared over 2. Okay. Um, now, 
there is a force of friction here, but what is the nature of the force of friction? So I have to think about that. It is uh, rolling without slipping. Therefore, uh, rolling without slipping implies static friction. Okay, so I don't know what is the direction of the friction. Uh, I can just assume a direction and then find out that it is right or it is uh, coming with a minus sign showing me that the force of friction is to the left. So since it says in part B of the problem show that the force of friction is to the right, let's assume that the force of friction is to the right and find out if that is the case. Okay, now, uh, what I can see here is that uh, I want to know the acceleration of the center of mass. I can use a torque equation in order to calculate this. Uh, and what I would like to do is to calculate the torque with respect to the contact point. Why do I want to calculate the torque with respect to the contact point? Because there is an unknown force there, force of friction. I don't want it to have any contribution to my torque equation. So I just want to consider uh, this, the torque due to this force F. Uh, so this is my R vector in order to calculate the torque. And I will find that there is only one contribution that's coming from capital F. Okay, so I start writing the torque uh, with respect to point C. Okay, so what is this torque? It is R cross F. Torque is equal to R F. So let me be careful with the sign here. This is going to cause a clockwise rotation. Okay, so the R cross F torque vector actually points into the board. So I will find a torque vector that points into the board in this case. And therefore it's negative. So it's minus R F. Okay. And what is this R? It is actually minus 2 R. F, 2 capital RF. So it's the magnitude of the R vector here is 2R. Okay, so it's minus 2RF. So this must be equal to moment of inertia with respect to point C times alpha, the angular acceleration it causes. Now I have to be careful because I know the moment of inertia for rotations at around center of mass axis so I can use parallel axis theorem in order to calculate the moment of inertia with respect to uh, point C here it is m r squared over 2 plus I look at the distance between the two axes it is r so it's going to be m r squared so this will be uh, 3 over 2 m r squared all right so the torque minus 2 r f is equal to 3 over 2 m r squared times alpha uh, so one of the R's cancel here. So let's get rid of this R. And I will find that my alpha is uh, minus 4F over 3MR. So it's just showing me that this alpha vector corresponds to a clockwise rotation. That's why I got this minus sign here. Okay, now I would like to know the acceleration of the center of mass, acceleration of the center of mass for rolling without slipping is equal to alpha times R, 
velocity was omega times r, acceleration is alpha times r. So this will be equal to uh, minus 4f over 3mr times r. So I find that the acceleration uh, well, in this case, let me get rid of this minus sign here because this is just telling me the direction of rotation. So it is the magnitude 4f over 3mr times r. So it is 4f over 3m. So if the rotation is to the uh, in the clockwise direction like this, what would be the direction of acceleration? Well, the acceleration will be to the right, right? So this has to be acceleration of the center of mass. So I find that it is actually in the direction of the force. Okay, so don't get confused with the minus sign here. It is just telling me that it's a clockwise rotation. It's a clockwise rotation. And it's alpha times r, the magnitude alpha times r gives me the acceleration of the center of mass. And then I can see that it's rolling without slipping in the clockwise direction. Rolling gives me an acceleration of the center of mass to the right, which is in the direction of the force. So this was the suggestion given in part A. Really, uh, the acceleration of the center of mass is 4f over 3m. Now, in part B it says, the force of friction should be to the right and it should be in magnitude uh, equal to f over 3. Now I need an equation that contains uh, force of friction. Um, well, I can use free body diagram and look at the translational motion here. I have the force F to the right and then I have the force small f to the right and this is my M. There is the Mg. There is the normal force. And as a result of this, I have acceleration of the center of mass to the right. So net force in the x, positive x direction is F plus F. This must be equal to the mass of the uh, spool times its acceleration, center of mass acceleration. Uh, so this is equal to 4m times 4f over 3m. So it is 4f over 3. I find that the force of friction should be 4f over 3 minus f. So it should be equal to f over 3. It is positive and as I have assumed, it is to the right. Okay, so indeed the force of friction is f over 3 and to the right. In part C it says, if the cylinder starts from rest and rolls without slipping, what is the speed of its center of mass after it has rolled through a distance uh, d? <clears throat> well, uh, in the notes you will find that I have used the energy approach in order to solve this problem. Uh, so you can do that and it's quite uh, instructive to do that. Uh, just to have a difference in uh, this solution, let's try this uh, using kinematics. Well, if it starts rolling without slipping, uh, starting from rest, so it starts from rest, I have a constant acceleration 4f over 3m, so I have constant acceleration uh, motion. Therefore, the distance I travel, initial velocity is zero. The distance I travel, d, is equal to 1 over 2 a center of mass t squared. So, the time it takes to complete the motion is 2d over a center of mass square root. 
And the final speed I will have, V center of mass final, will be equal to A center of mass times T. There is no initial speed, so it's just A times T. So this will be equal to A center of mass square root 2D over A center of mass. So I will have square root uh, 2D A center of mass. So it will come as A center of mass square, so it will cancel. And that will give me square root uh, 8 F D over 3 M for my final answer. So here I have substitute 4F over 3M for the acceleration of the center of mass. Okay, so I strongly suggest that you also look at the solution in the notes where I use the energy approach. Uh, and you